Today, we're going to learn about vertical reflections of quadratic relations. So, so far, we've looked at how the graph changes when we added or subtracted a number to the end of a quadratic relation, and we've looked at what happens when we added or subtracted a number on the inside of the brackets. But what would happen if x squared was being multiplied by mm -hmm. a number? Well, the answer is that it really depends on the situation. So let's go ahead and explore them. If the a that is being multiplied with x squared is a negative number, then there will be a vertical reflection on the x-axis of the whole graph. So, for example, if we had a rather wide parabola with a positive a as such, and then we decided to multiply this with negative 1, making a a negative number, then what happens is this. Every x value that once yielded this particular y value now yields the negative version of that y value. So, as you can see, this particular x value of 2 used to yield a y value of 1. But when we are talking about the equation with this negative a here, the x value of 2 would yield a y value of negative 1. So that's pretty easy. We just check to see if our a is positive or negative, and if it is positive, then we can expect the parabola to be opening upwards. And if it is negative, we can expect the parabola to open downwards. If you think about it, the idea of a parabola opening upwards means that there exists a lowest point on the graph. This is the point that is in the dead middle of the parabola. We call this point the vertex. It is important to note, however, that the vertex is not always the lowest point. After all, we did just learn that a negative a value would yield us a parabola that opens downwards. Aha! And as you can see, if a graph opens downwards, or shall I say, has a negative a value, then the vertex is actually the highest point on the graph. In fact, a lot of books will refer to the vertex as being the minimum point in this example and the maximum point in this one. So, suppose I gave you these equations. Would you be able to tell me which graph opens up and which one opens down? Also, would you be able to tell me which one has a vertex that is a minimum and which one has a vertex that's a maximum? Well, Finding the answer wouldn't be too difficult since all you'd have to do is look at the a value. Is it negative or not? As you can see in this example, the a over here is positive. This means that our graph is opening upwards and any parabola that opens upwards has a vertex that is a minimum. Let's take a look at the next example. This equation, on the other hand, has a negative a value. This means that the parabola will open downwards and the vertex would sit at the highest point in the parabola, making it a maximum point. Now, what about this one? Well, you've got to be a little bit careful here. Remember that when a is positive, it opens upwards and when it's negative, it opens downwards as it pertains to this particular equation. Notice how this equation is isolated for y. This equation that we have here is not isolated for y. And so while it might seem like our a is positive here, we need to first rearrange the equation and then determine if it is in fact true. Let's subtract 7x squared on both sides. Next, we will divide both sides by 3 to isolate for y. Now it turns out to be the case that when we look at our a, we have a negative number. Aha! So as you can see, we need to make sure that we rearrange the equation to isolate for y 
so that we don't end up with a wrong answer. Therefore, it turns out to be the case that this graph opens downwards and has its vertex at a maximum point. So you'll notice how we talked about how the vertical reflection of a graph is determined by whether or not the A value is positive or negative. But it turns out to be the case that depending on how big A is in its absolute value, you can expect to see a stretch or compression in the graph. This is a topic that we will save for our next video. So we will see you guys in our next lesson.